The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hey, who ballers? It's D A L E 007, also known as Devin Ellington in real life. Going to be running through some college basketball real briefly in an unorthodox fashion, which we are not accustomed to for the normal today in sports betting podcast. Vince is going to be handling the NBA in general show, but I wanted to make sure to get some NCAA basketball plays in starting with some 10 o'clock action for the Central Standard Time. I at least wanted to get opinionated on some games, run through some tally site picks, and offer some insight. And then uh, I'll probably be running through the game up into the middle point of the card of the slate for college basketball. So probably up until the 5, 5.30 games. Want to keep this one a little shorter. It's going to be more of a quick action clip, not like our normal 45-minute to an hour breakdown shows. So going to get rolling into it, but don't forget to go over to mybookie.ag to follow some of this uh, analysis here I'm about to give you. Use promo code HOOPBALL, H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L over there and get signed up. Let them know we sent you. Go ahead and get involved in those bracket challenges that they've got going on right now. It's going to be a lot of fun. They got some conference tournament plays that you can make. There's all sorts of action. NBA starting back up post All-Star game action. So get that checked out. Go over to hoop-ball.com. Check out our premium and free content. Like I talk about every time, you got to go and check out the blurbs on the side. Check out the injury and transaction tickers. Um, Some news is starting to come out. Blake Griffin signing with the Nets. Looking like Andre Drummond's got some vibrations in New Jersey. And, uh, you know, there's some veterans that are probably going to get moved soon, which could mean something for your young fantasy pieces. So get all the analysis and get all the breakdown. Come join the family. Get in there on the premium. Come join the Discord servers. It's really, really, really fun. Check out hoop-ball.com. Use that promo code. And let's talk about some college basketball. And this is going to be brisk and breezy, so I apologize, but we're going to just talk about some hoops here. I'm actually loading, you know, and spoiler alert, but I'm actually loading this play into wager pass as we speak, going to get the thread going for tomorrow early. Sacramento State, Northern Colorado, really like this game. I like Northern Colorado's offensive capabilities. I like the uptick that they're going to be looking at. They're a minus 138 uh, money line favorite right now in a lot of spots that I'm seeing. I like the minus two. I've got 1.1 units at risk to win one. And then that's starting at 10 a.m. It's the big sky championship first round, getting the day going real, real nice and uh, nice like. Sacramento State is a top five team in the country in regards to having their shots blocked. That means they don't get a lot of them blocked. And then they don't turn the ball over that much. And uh, just an, another little tidbit here I thought was interesting. Northern Colorado ranks number one in the country in both opponent three-point attempts and three-pointers made. So the battle of the perimeter and the deep shot going to be very vital in this matchup. Whoever wins and defends that the best is going to probably be the victor. So another thing that I like that's going to help Northern Colorado in the uh, play that I'm making is the fact that uh, – the the Sacramento State defense ranks 335th or worse in opponent two-point percentage, shooting percentage, as well as shooting efficiency. So Northern Colorado, usually not a high-volume shooting team, but they might have an uptick in some opportunities. Northern Colorado going with the Bears minus two. NC State, Syracuse, we got some awesome ACC tournament second-round matchup um, in play here. And um, there's not a whole lot of things better than March Syracuse basketball, postseason Syracuse and Jim Beheim play. And uh, real short, real brief, I'm going to be on the side of the Cuse uh, orange on this one. NC State's losing a 
uh, guard out of their trio of guards who average at least one steal a game. So less turnovers here, I think, for Syracuse. That 3-2 zone is always challenging. Or is it the 2-3 zone? Bayheim runs the 2-3 zone, I think. I always get it flip-flopped. If you're a basketball fan, you know what I'm talking about. We, we all know what zone I'm talking about. It's the Syracuse zone he's been running since 1986, I think it was, 87. So, so people still haven't figured it out. It's been like 40 years now, and people, I don't know. It, it's, it's odd. Um, and it still creates problems in March. So um, NC State down a guy. I like Syracuse's chances here. It's a real thin line. Could be a real close game. Obviously, underdog, under wolf can always bite in this game um, and, you know, take a bite out of the orange. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and back Jim Beheim in March. Uh, the Qs are in bubble form. They've lost a few, a couple of games late in the ACC regular season wrap-up. So they're looking for redemption um, on those losses. And I like their chances of getting, you know, one of those uh, or two of those here in the um, ACC tournament. And the next game, Northern Arizona, Portland State, Big Sky, first round. Be real brief on this one. Um, You know, Portland State, heavy um, heavy favorite, minus 332. Some low-tempo teams right here. Northern Arizona really faltered off after starting decent and playing well through the middle parts of their conference schedule. They're a seven-point dog, and, you know, just right now as a contrarian look, um, 100% of the picks, and I believe it's eight, uh, see, five picks. So not a lot of pros on this on tally site either. There's 18 picks on the Syracuse NC State game, so obviously bigger schools getting some attention. But Northern Arizona, the Lumberjacks, plus seven points. They're the two plus 255 money line dog. I actually, you know, I don't hate it. I would want to look at the numbers a little bit further or a lot a bit further. You know, I, to be honest, haven't dug too far into this game other than what I already know about these two teams and their tendencies. So the rankings that I use team rankings for the most part. Um, Great, great website. And um, Northern Arizona right now is a 319th ranked team, but we've seen some 300 ranked teams already have some success in these conference tournaments. In the CAA, Drexel just became the uh, lowest seeded team, the number six seed to win the uh, March Madness bid out of their conference since 2013. Or it was either 2013 or 2016. I can't remember. I want to say 2013. So underdogs, like I have said and harped on already, having some success in these conference tournaments. Um, slight lean just to make it fun in the early parts of the afternoon on Northern Arizona against Portland State. Um, we'll move on to the next game briefly. I just want to, you know, for some reason, I want to throw a little tidbit out about this Northern Arizona Portland State game. Something interests me about it. Oof. You know what? Yeah, just throw out everything I said about that. Northern Arizona almost lets their opponent shoot an effective field goal percentage of 59.7. So almost 60%. That is crazy. Yeah, no, let's stay away from that. That's either going to be a complete blowout or the uh, underdog is just going to win and it's that's how it's going to be. But there's not going to be a happy medium. I That seven is a weird number. Wyoming, I'm just going to go ahead and pick them straight up on tally site. You know, the San Jose team been getting blown out all year. Wyoming, I was going to look at the total, but I haven't really had some success this year against Wyoming uh, totals this year. So I haven't really figured out. Miami, I'm really sour about. They beat um, Pittsburgh today. I'm recording this now here about 11 p.m. Central Standard the night before. Going to try to get this out as an additional piece to the pod. But um, Miami, Clemson, uh, I faltered myself on picking Clemson games towards the end of ACC. I had to back off of them a little bit as a team I was betting and placing picks on. Miami, I just can't figure them out. Um, I've n- In the almost two, two and a half years of – uh, me handicapping and making picks and plays and uh, playing around with betting and numbers and whatnot. 
Miami is just a team that I've not really ever had success with. So over that large of a spread, I should probably just go ahead and lay off this. Looking for some other value spots in the ACC tournament, though. Marquette, the Golden Eagles. I like them in this spot a lot on the money line, minus 158 in a lot of good spots here. Marquette, minus three on the uh, spread. Georgetown, if if their offensive rebounding is in check and their defensive uh, aggressive rebounding is in check so they don't get out and tr- transition as fast. They're they're an easy team to kind of slow down in the half court. And I think Marquette is fast enough and, um, you know, they're going to draw enough fouls on this young Georgetown team to slow the game down a little bit, but also get Georgetown in a position where they can get scored on. So that's how I'm looking at that. Jackson State, Arkansas State, or I'm sorry, Arkansas Pine Bluff, the Golden Lions. No true opinion on this one. I do have Jacksonville State, or I'm sorry, Jackson State. Um, I need to get my wires right. Um, as a minus 400 money line pick on tally site, I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. But, you know, um, at this time of the year, I'm trying to, you know, have some really good weeks um, on tally site. And sometimes you got to take those stat pad patterns. So, um, speaking of good weeks on tally site, Troy and uh, Blake and, uh, you know, uh, Riley, three of our new guys that we just, or I can't say new for Troy, he's been around, but uh, two of the newer guys, Blake and Riley, um, you know, they're already having top five weeks over here on tally site. So, look for more to come on hoop ball, be climbing up the ranks on tally site as an organization. Washington State, Arizona State, low-key one of my more favorite matchups of the day um, as a basketball fan. I think this is a really good just conference game. Washington State's a team I like a little bit more, but with the dy- dynamic score like Remy Martin that Arizona State has, even with all those guys out, you know, I bet on Arizona State, and maybe it was just a bad spot, and it was a dumb thing for me to do because it was Washington I bet on, but for Arizona state to be down all those guys, you know, I think they had like six guys off their roster um, that couldn't play still the case. uh, Maybe not as many, but very heavily emptied out as far as the depth goes. Um, Washington state still young, you know, but they've won some really impressive games and they've stuck around in some games this year and they uh, pack that tough pack 12 um, conference. So, I like Washington State. You know, they're minus 105 on the money line that I got picked here, and I went ahead and took them plus one on the spread. So so I think they'll just win the game outright. Try to get a twofer out of it. Air Force, UNLV. Air Force, another Mountain West team that gets blown out quite often, almost every time they step on the court. The running Rebels, no true opinion. Heavy, heavy, heavy favorite, obviously. 12.5 point spread for Air Force over unders at 129. You know, I, I like the over in these UNLV games. My problem is Air Force is such an uh, inefficient offense. Um, UNLV goes through spurts. They're streaky. You never know when they're going to be efficient or not. Idaho and Montana. Montana obviously going to be the heavy favorite in this game. And um, as we move into the later parts of the afternoon, we are getting into more big sky action. Uh, I got some MAAC with Iona and Siena. Um, it's the quarterfinal. It's going to be a really good matchup um, out in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And um, Idaho, Montana, heavy favorite. Idaho, one win on the season, 20 losses. Um, I don't know what you want me to say about that. So if you have a question about it, you can DM me <laughs> or you know, ask in the Discord chat if you're a premium uh, sub. So uh iona sienna like i said um iona really surprised me in the first round game that they had they came out and executed um there's been a lot of times this season where i didn't think rick patino had a really good grasp on his team and um his transition back to coaching um obviously he's still gonna you know get some wrinkles in it i think next year will be a lot smoother i've talked about it a couple times the last time or two i've talked about iona and Siena has just been the steady force in that conference this year. And this is a good, uh, you know, this should honestly be kind of like a semifinal matchup in my opinion. So I think we're in for a treat at 4 p.m. Central with this, um, these two teams. So I really like this matchup. And Siena, as far as, um, 
you know, spread. I think the spread is going to be a little too high for me to enjoy the value on that. And one thing I do like, though, is just looking at Sienna to win straight up. And as of right now, you know, I'm over here clicking away. I got three tabs and another screen in front of me, and I'm trying to find. Yeah, I don't see. Not seeing a spread for that one as of right now. So keep an eye on that. It'll be a good matchup, 4 p.m. Central. Loyola, Maryland, and Army. Army, for some reason, only a two-point favorite. Uh, Army was blowing teams out to end their regular season. And I like them in the spot here. Minus 140 on the money line. You know, if you want to lay like a unit and a half or two units on that, uh, maybe you incorporate it into a small parlay or something, um, then, you know, I wouldn't, you know, turn my nose at that. Army minus two looks good. Um, I've still got some numbers to dig on this, but my general overview right now of the card is including Army and the picks that I'll be making. Butler, Xavier, these two teams actually just recently played, so I don't know what to make of it so much. Uh, Xavier getting a lot of the betting numbers on it, a lot of lot of people coming in on them, a lot of picks. Over, under 133 and a half. I'm going to roll with the over. You know, the, the Butler offense is starting to shoot a little more efficiently. Xavier has been allowing a lot more points. You know, I thought that defense was going to hold, but it really hasn't as we tailed off from the Big East uh, conclusion. So first, first round game rested teams, uh, Xavier had been allowing a lot of points. So I, th- I think the teams and the offenses in this one are going to be a little more loose. Southeastern Louisiana, man, this, uh, I hate this because that they're playing this game because they beat McNeese, uh, today. And we also lost on the under it was two for Tuesday, so going for two for three for minus 2.2 units ain't ever a good thing. But, you know, it's coming off the tails of a 2 and 0 night for plus three units. So over the last two days, still up plus uh, 0.8. Um, we'll try to keep it on the positive as we roll into Selection Sunday. We got to get in prime form for March Madness. Uh, so stay peeled, stay frosty. Southeastern Louisiana, like I said, playing New Orleans. I don't really have a good grasp on either one of these teams. Call it a cop-out. Um, but, you know, like I said, we're going to try to be brisk and breezy on some of this stuff. Southland, second-round matchup. Uh, I believe it's going to be on like ESPN+. Plus. I would say put an eyeball on it. New Orleans uh, has an interesting offense. They have a lot of different motions that they run with their bigs, their medium-sized players, their uh, hybrid forward guard guys. And they get out and run on transition. Southeastern, they get scored on a lot, but McNeese just could not hit their shots, even though they, um, you know, uh, Southeastern Louisiana allows about a 55 effective field goal percentage uh, against. So look for New Orleans to maybe um, cash in on a team total over um, or to be able to hit their shots better than what the Cowboys were able to do um, in the game for the first round of the Southland Conference. Minnesota, Northwestern. I am dumb for even having an opinion on this one, but I do. Minnesota was starting to get healthy at the end of the Big Ten play. They still suck terribly on the road, but this is a neutral game. It's not a true road game. Uh, So I'm going to try to make a play here. Minnesota plus 113, plus 115, I bet you could find on my bookie. Uh, Minnesota plus two. Uh, to win outright, you know, they're the lower seed, but I think they're the better tournament team. They have better pro talent. They have better prototypical scores. They have, in my opinion, better depth and getting a couple of those pieces back due to uh, health recovery um, is a big, big thing for the Golden Gophers. So I think the NBA talent alone is enough for me to back them in a tournament setting in a one win, you know, one and done kind of thing. Kansas State taking on TCU plus 150 on the money line, plus four on the spread, over under 128 and a half. It's a it's pretty much a 50-50 split down the road on this on this game card. Um, not a lot of love to the Kansas State money line. This is the first round. 
tipping off at 5.30 tomorrow in the Sprint Center in Kansas City, and I will not be there, um, even though it would be awesome to be there. Um, used to hang out around the area and bartend um, around this time of year, and it was very, very fun. And shout out to all the Kansas Cityans out there going to the Sprint Center. Hopefully I got some Missouri and Kansas people out here listening. Enjoy it. If you're going to go, be safe. Root for the Cowboys. Go Pokes. And, uh, you know, it's a good, fun experience, the basketball experience that they have set up out there. Um, if if you want a nice, low-key, awesome conference tournament to go to and you want it on your bucket list, the Big 12 one is just a really great environment. The whole area around um, really embraces it, and it's just a really fun basketball culture takeover for, you know, five straight days. So, Kansas State, I like them as an underdog, you know, playing in their home area. It's their backyard. Duke, Louisville, uh, you know, I got Duke getting on a heater. Um, You know, they're starting to look out. This is another one of those coaches you don't want to be against in March. And Coach K, obviously, with the Duke. The Blue Bloods starting to come through. They've gotten some key wins to end the season. Um, They looked dominant in their first-round game, you know, I kind of figured that's how that would go. Uh, In a lot of my ACC bracket projections, I had Louisville and Duke right here in the second round matchup. I mean, probably all my ACC bracket stuff. I wouldn't imagine why I wouldn't have Duke moving forward. Uh, And I think Duke beats them here. You know, I like the scenario that we can get a Duke-UNC semifinal matchup um, on this side of the bracket. So uh, I'm going to kind of probably be rolling Duke for the next couple days. Um, Look how they come out and perform early. That's going to be telling, especially against this Louisville team, who if they get locked in defensively, they're hard to move. New Mexico, Fresno State. I could look at the under. The um, thing that interests me most about that is how inefficient New Mexico's offense is, but also how well uh, of defense they play. They play a lot of pressure and create a lot of, uh, if not turnovers, a lot of sloppiness, you know. So a lot of awkward shots, a lot of uh, sets not being set up as smoothly, all that good stuff. So, man, I went into the 6 o'clock games. So let me go ahead and stop there. We talked about one 6 o'clock game. I got you covered for most of the day. Didn't want this to be anything too long, too crazy. So um, let me go ahead and wrap a bow on this one. Not sure how we're going to sandwich it in with the episode, if we're going to include it in the same one or if we're going to do two. But nonetheless, here's some basketball content and uh, expect some write-ups and some plays. Um, yeah, I'm just happy it's conference week. We got uh, Selection Sunday coming up this Sunday. So probably a couple of these little side recordings or extra just blurbs here uh, for me this week just because there's going to be a lot more to talk about and it's of vital importance. So don't forget to go over to hoop-ball.com. Like I said, at the top, uh, five-star reviews. We're about to wrap up that giveaway. We're going to be giving out cash for you to use at mybookie.ag. We're going to get you set up via uh, the funds in the bank of HoopBall. So we're going to be wrapping that up. Um, make sure to screenshot your, uh, reviews as you do them. Uh, from what I hear with iTunes and the Apple music and whatnot, um, they kind of hold and verify their reviews for a couple of days. So we may not see it right away. So make sure to take a picture, screenshot, what have you send it to us, send it to Dan to at hoopball gaming to at D A L E 007, me at Dan Bespris, um, uh, support at hoop dashball.com you can send it there just make sure to put in you know five star review contests or whatever in the subject so got that don't forget the promo code at uh, mybookie.ag and let's go ahead and send this one out so as always I'm sending you all my good vibes all my good energies and uh, let's get some hoops in our life we got a heavy dosage so take care see you on the next one
This has been a Hoop Ball presentation.